So today we're going to be talking about how one can leverage high fidelity simulation and design space exploration to optimize a pelletizing kiln design. And I'm joined today by Guillerme de Silva from ATS4I in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Good morning, Guillerme. Hi, Drew. How are you doing? <laughs> Very good. So this is uh, truly a wonder of the internet that we can uh, have speakers here in, in Bellevue, Washington and uh, also in Sao Paulo. So. Uh, so let's let's just quickly go through the agenda. Uh, we'll have a very quick introduction of uh, the speakers, followed by an introduction of the company. I won't spend too much time on that, and then we'll get right into the problem overview. We'll talk about some of the results, and we'll have a an opportunity to see how you can use design space exploration to evaluate those results. Uh, then we'll come back and summarize uh, what we learned in the study and uh, open it up to questions. So a quick introduction uh, for some of you. Maybe you've uh, had an opportunity to sit into some of our webinars before. My name is Dorel Rittenberg. I'm the Vice President of Product Management here at TechBlot Incorporated in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, I've been with the company since 2001. So this is a dozen years with the company, and I've done hundreds of presentations on data visualization and other techniques, as well as uh, published uh, several first author publications uh, throughout the literature, primarily in chemical physics, um, some in uh, aerospace engineering. So again, uh, thank you all for joining us. I'm also joined by Guillerme de Silva uh, from ATS4I. Uh, Guillerme, who spent a fair amount of his career with Embraer, uh, before that was Shell Oil, Air Liquide, and the Institute for Technology Research at Sao Paulo State. Uh, and he's been with ATS4I now for, it looks like, better part of five years. Um, prior to that, he received his PhD uh, in heat and mass transfer and two-phase flow and anti-ice systems. And he's also a current reviewer of the SAE, SAE Journal of Aerospace in the United States, as well as uh, the Journal of Aerospace Engineering in the UK and others. I'm very happy to have an opportunity to have Guillerme with us this morning. Good morning, Guillerme, and I'm going to turn it over to Guillerme, who's going to talk about some of the work he's done. So, Guillerme, you are, you have the mouse. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to present next. Yeah. Uh, also online, there is uh, my partner here in ets for i he, Francisco Alves de Souza. He is working, has worked with combustion since the, the early 70s for 40 years. Uh, 30 years he worked in a research institute here in Brazil. And he, he was awarded by some innovation prizes in Petrobras and IPT and has some patents in the area. And he is at with ATS for I since two thousand ten. Um, okay. Yeah, ATS is an engineering company, it's an engineering office that uh, does pre design conceptual studies, design definition, but also equipment upgrade and difficult resolution which is the case that we are going to present here. And we do also test planning. We supervise testing and analyze the results. And we, we also provide services so that our customers can come to us just to ask for analysis, CFD, thermal analysis, or plant diagnostics, equipment systems, and or to develop simulation models. Uh, here we are different because we are not just an outsourcing company because we understand the engineering. So every service that we do for analysis, we put some engineer on, on that. So we check all the inputs with analytical models and check the outputs so we can you can have a differential in the market that's very difficult to find. And if we, the customer is in Brazil, we can also provide licenses for software. We distribute here TechPlot, 
all the TechPlot products, TechPlot 360, Focus, Corus, RS, but also we distribute Metacomp technology software, CFD++, MIME, CA++, CSM++. Okay, and a quick note about TechPlot. Oh, okay, sorry, Jeremy, you're one slide back, but you want to... Okay, yeah, and about this problem that we are going to talk, we already published it with Samarco uh, Mining Company, two papers, or one paper and another presentation, oral presentation, about this specific problem that generated a patent of a novel burner design. And we use it heavily CFD and TechPlot to, <coughs> to find the best solution for Samarco. And we also have other papers that can, can be accessed or downloaded at our site. The, the address is right here. And you can check that after the, the, this, this meeting here. So, Duro, I think it's your part now. Okay, thanks, Guillermo. Okay, um, well, for those of you who are perhaps not as familiar with TechBlock Company, we were incorporated back in 1981. Um, at that time, Mike Peary and Don Roberts uh, were employees at Boeing, and they uh, knew each other from way back when. I think they went to the same uh, elementary school and uh, both did a, a stint at Har or at uh, Stanford. Pardon me. And uh, in 1981, they started TechPlot. Primarily, we developed CFD codes. And uh, through that work, we developed TechPlot as a mechanism to evaluate uh, those CFD results. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to be uh, used in all sorts of applications. And we currently have over 50,000 users worldwide. And uh, we have now over 110 academic site licenses. In fact, we just uh, have two more from Australia. So TechBot's been around for a long time. Our primary goal is to help engineers see. In effect, we want to help engineers and scientists analyze, explore, and discover information and communicate results. And that's kind of the most important thing for us is how do you take all that information and communicate something that helps people make good decisions? Because engineering work is getting more and more complicated, and we want to make that as easy as possible. Uh, in effect, we, we don't want you to have to get a PhD in tech plot to, to make a simple plot that would help you understand uh, your results. We currently have uh, three main tools. Uh, we have another tool, which is for engineering plotting, but there's tech plot course, which I'll talk about today. We have tech plot 360, which is um, primarily used for fluid dynamics analysis. And we also have tech plot RS, which is primarily for people in the oil and gas industry doing reservoir simulation. So we have three main products. Today we'll be talking primarily about design space exploration, which is really uh, simulation analytics, the union of visualization, data management, statistics, and data mining to a set of CFD solutions. And we're going to actually use this, so I need to go into that with great detail. OK, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Guillermo, who's going to talk about the work that he did uh, with Smarco. Yeah. The, the work we did for Samarco uh, was caused by an uh, issue that appeared after they introduced uh, a change of fuel in the furnace tree of their line. And they changed it from li a liquid heavy fuel to natural gas, mainly to reduce emissions, okay? And however, after they, they, they changed the fuel, they, they noticed that there was increased the, the deposition of particles in the bottom of the chamber. And this led to a high maintenance frequency because it almost blocked the combustion chamber because the particles were deposited, accreted in the bottom wall of the chamber and it melted, synthesized, and melted there. Okay, and so, and that that because the flame was deflected too much after the conversion from liquid heavy oil to natural gas. Okay, so the flame deflected, heated 
the bottom wall and lead, lead to resulted to uh, melting and sinterizing uh, uh, iron oxide. The next slide. Oh, you should. You do have mouse control, so if you do want to, yeah. you can go ahead and just click. Okay, I just clicked here. I think you should you should there you go should go one slide yeah okay so uh, the combustion chamber is very simplified here and you have uh, air coming through the the down cumber in a whole top to bottom uh, flow direction and you have the burner in the left side here. Um, and the lens of the burner, and so you have the flame here that's deflected by the air that comes in cross flow. So the flame here approximates or become close to the wall, and at the same time you have particles coming coming down from the downcomer and accreting or impinging in that region. So you have heat from the flame and particles here that cause it. Um, a deposition or of FEO uh, sinterized and melted here, and just just for information, this this furnace tree has 42 combustion chambers like that, 21 each side. This is the duct in in, in the upper duct right here, where the the flow comes down here, so it comes to the downcomer. So you have 42 combustion chambers, 42 burners, okay? That's the size of the problem. And you can imagine if, if you have the 42 with a blocked air, you, you need to have maintenance, and you, you, you don't want to stop all the furnace at the same time and the production. So we, our conclusion after analyzing the problem was that there was a, a high uh, pressure, uh, was a momentum imbalance between the streams, between the downcomer and the jet flow, and after the conversion, the, the momentum of the jet was lowered because it was a natural gas and had a lower density than the liquid oil. So, uh, you can see in the literature about the cross uh, cross flow jets in cross flow, and that's it depends the the center line of the jet along the the axis of the the chamber will depend on the momentum ratio between the jet and the downcomer. Okay, this is a a, a reference from Lefebvre book. Gas turbine, gas turbine combustion. So, next slide, yeah. So, uh, our ob objective in this project was to, f to design a new burner or to propose some mark on new burner or new burner modifications and trying to, to, uh, to, to have the flame uh, the bottom border of the flame uh, as far as possible from the wall. So we need to, to make the flame uh, far from the wall, to not heat too much, to not sinterize the particles, to not melt. Uh, so how we, are, we did that was to increase the momentum flux ratio between the jet and the dull cumber duct and in addition increase the, the jet angle. So we have an angle, it was zero in the original design. We, we increase that angle to make the flame farther from the wall. So basically we use the CFD++ uh, to, to solve the flow and we simulate five nozzles uh, with three new diameters, two are uh, the baseline and we test also uh, 
zero five, 7.5, 10, and 12.5, and 15 degrees. Let's see, yeah. So, uh, the original configurations are the nozzle A. So, let, let's talk about the nozzle. The nozzle, you have the natural gas stream in the middle, and you have, in, in a coaxial manner, uh, air stream around it. Okay, that's the burner. And we have the nozzle A and nozzle C was original with diameter of 24 and 27 millimeters. And so uh, with the, the pressure was the same, but if you decrease the diameter, so you increase the velocity, the discharge velocities. So we decrease the diameter, the nozzle B for to 18.8, 21, and 14. Okay. So basically, you have the jet, the momentum flux of the jet, and you have the momentum flux of the duct. So you have a ratio here. Okay. So you can see that the solutions that we are proposing are three folding or two folding or five folding the original values to try to not have the or to decrease or to minimize the jet deflection and to make the flame far from the wall, okay? So, um, we use CFD++, it was a compressible real gas over. We, we didn't need to use combustion at this particular application because we use all the species at uh, at uh, operational temperature, so CH4 was a flame temperature, and air was at the operational temperature, and we simulated as a fully turbulent, K absolutely realizable, and in terms of solution space, we have six angles and five nozzles configurations. So I think Varel is short time now. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. So what we wanted to do then is to evaluate the design space where we're looking at, in effect, it's only a two-dimensional problem. Uh, in this case, we're looking at uh, the effect of the different nozzle designs as well as the uh, nozzle angle. So we have uh, 30 solutions that we're going to evaluate, and the idea is we want to understand what the physical drivers are that are impact impacting the system performance. And Guillerme already talked about some of the physical drivers. We'll show you how you can see those physical drivers uh, or realize them by evaluating the system of results. And ultimately, though, we want to show you that you can use a tool like TuckBlock Chorus to do design space exploration and to help you with the identification effectively of, of what's driving this phenomena and to see it both visually and present it uh, perhaps to a customer. So with that, I'm going to quickly change into tech plot course and let's see if it shows up okay cool so uh, quickly let me show you what we have here this is uh, tech plot chorus and what I'm showing you are the cases we brought in as Guillerme pointed out we're looking at uh, five different nozzle designs you can see nozzle a B C D and E and we're looking at uh, different angles from 0 5 7.5 10 12 and 15 so that's kind of our design space that we're going to evaluate. Each one of these solutions actually is, uh, and I'll show you just an example here. Uh, let's see, this is probably fine. We're going to show you, you can actually open this up. So this is the physics uh, behind, this is the uh, downcomer, this is the nozzle, and what you're looking at is an isosurface uh, of the uh, CH4 gases, the methane. So in effect, this is an approximation of the flame and it's currently colored by the W component of the velocity. And you can see that this is the length along the combustor. The combustors are close to 10 meters long, about 7 meters total. And uh, what we can do is try to evaluate each individual solution. Now these are axisymmetric, or at least symmetric, they're not axisymmetric. 
Um, and you can see kind of which one is which. So this is uh, nozzle angle 10, and uh, this is, uh, I guess, nozzle design E. So we have uh, a two-dimensional space, so probably a better way to evaluate these results would be to look at them in the context of what we often re refer to as a matrix view. So what I'm going to show you quickly is now we're looking at angle. So we have angles from 0 to 15 as a function of nozzle design. So we're looking at uh, nozzle design A and C, which I believe were our original designs, and B is the proposed nozzle. Uh, D and E were both proposed as well. And we're going to quickly evaluate all of the results we have by stepping through. We're going to step through as a function of distance along the combustor. So we're looking at uh, 0. Now we're moving to 0.1. 0.2, 0.3, and what you're seeing on screen, and I'll let it update because it's uh, it's the internet. Okay, there you go, it stopped. So what you're you're seeing right here is actually the flame itself, and uh, this green line, and I'll I'll zoom in on a case so you can see it a little more uh, in more detail. This uh, line here, this light blue, which is basically at uh, three percent methane, uh, is an approximation of the flame. And what we're looking at in particular is we're trying to understand the distance between this flame and the wall because we don't want the um, we don't want the sinterization to happen and, and we don't want the accumulation of iron oxide buildup in uh, combustor. And so the the idea of the study was to try to understand okay well based on these designs what is the maximum distance that we can achieve uh, just by changing nozzle design and angle. So we're trying to maximize the distance between this uh, isosurface or isoline and the wall. And we'll show you some quantitative data about that in a second. So as we walk down the combustor, you can see that if we think through and look at our original design, I'll step out a bit so you can see this in, in a little better detail. So the original design, uh, which was nozzle C, at zero degrees, you can see that in this case, the flame is more or less touching the wall at about, and I think we're at 3 here, let's go back to 1.5, which is really about where it impinges. Okay, so you can see that at about 1.5 meters from the nozzle, we're starting to see an impingement of the flame onto the uh, the wall of the combustor, which is causing the accumulation of buildup. And the idea was, what uh, could we do to try to move that flame up? And so we're looking at our design space now, we're looking at the 30 cases that we evaluated, and a couple things kind of, I think, really jump out at you. Number one, if you look at the original nozzle design, regardless of angle, uh, you see that you have relatively low spacing between the flame and the wall of the combustor. Whereas uh, if you look at uh, nozzle design E, you can see that uh, you have, especially at 15 degrees, you have uh, much more space between the flame and the wall. So if we're measuring this distance here, which uh, this is the optimal or computationally optimal solution, which would be at nozzle E at 15 degrees. Uh, the proposed design was actually this one, which is nozzle B at, uh, this is uh, at 10 degrees. And the original solutions were actually nozzle A and nozzle C, uh, which were at zero degrees. So these are the solutions that we have identified as having uh, these were the original solutions that we're comparing against, and these solutions here are uh, the solutions that were proposed. So this is the optimal solution, but this is, uh, from a business standpoint, this is a better solution. So let's just look at those four solutions for a moment. So now we're, we're only looking at the solutions that we uh, want to evaluate. So we'll look at, just so that we know which ones we're looking at here. Okay, so this is the uh, nozzle. This is the original design. This is uh, the two original designs. This is the design we're proposing, and this final one is the computationally optimal design. And we'll go to, say, 1.5. So this represents that plume, and we can very quickly say, well, if we want to evaluate this um, qualitatively against these different design configurations, we can do a qualitative difference. And what this qualitative difference basically gives us is a difference of the images. And I'll zoom out a little bit. So one thing you can see is 
this is the, the plume. So between the two, this is the two originals, uh, they have almost identical uh, spacing between the flame and the wall. As we look at the uh, proposed solution and the optimal solution, you can see that this represents, this uh, part represents the flame in the new solution relative to the uh, original solution. You can see that uh, you see a significant improvement and a more significant pr improvement uh, with the angle 15 degrees and nozzle design E. So that gives you kind of a, a quick way to evaluate qualitatively the delta. You may also want to evaluate all these results uh, in context. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and close this for a second. I'm going to view now the actual data. So I'm going to look at all four solutions. And uh, for simplicity, we'll just look at the, the plume. And basically what I'm doing now is I'm going to open up all these results, and we're going to evaluate them in a physics visualizer. So this is in TechBlock 360. So we, we can now take a look at those plumes. And again, you can see the, the two uh, nominal solutions versus the optimized solutions. Uh, you see significant changes in the distance between the uh, flame and the wall. If I wanted to look at temperature, though, for example, if uh, I was more interested in, say, a slice uh, along the, say, the z-axis here. We'll move it in just a little bit and perhaps uh, look at the temperature profile. Okay, so there's the temperature profile, and I'll turn off the isosurface for clarity. So we can very quickly evaluate uh, temperature and perhaps even bring it out to the symmetry plane. Now you can see kind of uh, the flame itself. If I then uh, say, well, I want to look at this across all of my solutions, one of the things that you can do when you're doing design space exploration is you can actually synchronize the style across all of your simulations. So it gives you a very easy way to evaluate these different designs. And again, what we're really interested in is this distance here, which you can see is maximized in the uh, case of nozzle design E15. We'll go back into Chorus for a second. So Chorus allows us then to evaluate this design space, but we're not limited to uh, looking at just the, the flame itself. We, of course, could look at things like the particle paths. And now what we're looking at is uh, the uh, particles that are coming into the combustor and looking at the pattern. These are massed particles. Um, they're basically a little smaller than a, a particle of sand. And what you're looking at uh, when you look at these data is how those particles flow through the combustor during operation. And what you're trying to do is understand uh, what are the main differences. And you can see for, for the most part, uh, the particles themselves don't change dramatically depending on the operational conditions. Uh, you can also look at, uh, this is the actual uh, cross-sectional view of the plume. And this is a way that you can actually quantify by looking at the minimum distance uh, between the wall and the this is a slice through the isosurface of the flame. And so this is a one mechanism to evaluate what that distance looks like. So you can, again, do that in the context of all of the solutions simultaneously. Also, we can look at the um, W component of the velocity, uh, which is, in a way, the jet center. And can see how that changes as a function of the design. and. Uh, so the, the important thing to point out here is that what this allows you to do, again, is to evaluate the differences between, say, the, the first nominal designs uh, and the optimized solution. And again, you can do the same kind of qualitative delta. Uh, since the mesh weren't the same, we can't do a quantitative delta today, but we're working on ways to make that easier as well. Um, if we go back then to chorus here, we can also evaluate say, the quantitative data, these are results that came out of the uh, simulation. So we're looking at the nozzle design, and what we're looking at is the integrated amount of methane at about one meter from the combustor. And you can take a look at uh, each individual design and how that design is performing under these uh, operational conditions where the nozzle is changing. And as you might imagine, as we move that nozzle up to higher angles, actually the amount of uh, methane that we're seeing at about one meter out actually goes up substantially. So again, it's a way to both quantitatively and qualitatively evaluate these results. So we're now looking at uh, the nozzle numbers versus the nozzle angle. And we're again looking at uh, the amount of methane. So you can start to evaluate 
uh, integrated quantities that come out from the solution. Uh, ideally, I wanted to look at the distances. I didn't have an opportunity to uh, calculate the distances as a function of uh, position along the combustor. But the idea is that you can evaluate those and, in fact, uh, use a surrogate model. And in the white paper, uh, we will actually be presenting a surrogate model of these data. But we won't do that today. So let me quickly uh, pop back into the presentation and we can take a look at how you can present results from Chorus uh, that would help you understand uh, the results. So, so here uh, again is another simple solution. We're looking at uh, 0.1 meters from the nozzle. This is the two optimal configurations. This is nozzle B at an angle of 10 degrees. The original design, which was uh, nozzle A and nozzle C at zero, as well as a proposed design uh, just for, again, there are design considerations that need to be taken into account, which is a nozzle B at uh, zero. So you can kind of look at all of these. And as we walk through, we can start to look at how those are changing and each individual solution. So you can see at about 0.7 meters from the, the nozzle, uh, you could see that compared to the uh, original configurations, nozzle B uh, seems to have a significantly more distance between uh, the flame and the wall. And that's more pronounced as you get out to 1.5 meters where you can see that the two original uh, configurations are more or less on the wall whereas uh, configuration B is off the wall. But when compared to the two optimal configurations you see there's uh, much more distance. Down here in the XY line plot you can see that what we did is look at the each individual nozzle and we're looking at the distance from the uh, from the flame to the wall. The original configuration, C, you can see that it's a relatively small distance. And the optimal solution, which is E at 15 degrees, shows that substantial change. So here are those four results. You can see, again, this is the distance between the wall and the flame. And this, the optimal design is, is much uh, better. Here is a way to look at the qualitative data. So we're looking at the uh, image difference which shows the baseline optimal design and uh, the best design. And you can see here what I've actually taken it over this quantified what you can see. So the wall is black. You're looking at the original design distance, which is quite small. And you can see the net improvement uh, for B at zero degrees versus E at 15 degrees. Finally, uh, another way to look at the quantitative data you can look at the plumes across uh, the cases. You can look at an expanded view. Again, what you're trying to do is try to understand quantitatively uh, what the net improvement is, which you can see in this case is um, quite a bit, actually. OK, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Guillerme, who's going to summarize some of the findings that they uh, took away from this study. And uh, then we'll have an opportunity to answer questions. So Guillerme. Yeah, so uh, we analyzed the, all the solution space and we found two candidates for, for design. One is nozzle E 15 degrees, so the, the jet is tilted in a, in a, in a YZ plane by 15 degrees up and the nozzle B10. The reason why we didn't select the nozzle E 15 degrees is because to operate the nozzle E we need higher pressure upstream the nozzle to keep the same flow and that we would require a new pressure regulator spring or pressure regulate mod modifications and San Marco had, has 42 chambers, so you have several valves to change. And the other thing is if you tilt not 10 but 15 degrees, the modification in the burner would be much a major modification that would require a new burner, a new lens duct. So we, by economical reasons, or in the business side was uh, enough to choose the P10. And you can see here that uh, 
even the B10, this is the red line, provides significant change or improvement over the nozzle C0. So it would be the optimal solution to, to have the nozzle E at 15 degrees, but it's enough to have the B10 in terms of engineering and business. So uh, you can see here that's the wall distance. Um, you have several slices in its Z direction in symmetry plane. And this is three, uh, the maximum of CH4, so the center of the jet. Okay, and if you look, not the maximum of CH4 mass fraction, but the 3% of mass fraction that is, uh, can be approximated by the, the flame, flame border, uh, you can see that the improvement is, is very significant, much more than in the center. So we are making the flame far from the wall, um, so we can prevent the melting and sinterization or minimize the melting and sinterization of the particles, the iron oxide particles. So next slide. So basically we choose the 10 degrees inclination uh, nozzle, which it was very nice for our customer, San Marco, because we implemented a small change in the burner, uh, very quick and very cheap, that uh, didn't require a new lens burner or didn't require any change to the furnace itself, uh, to the, the installation itself, to the system, to valves. So it was only insert, placed in the front of in the, the tip of the lens and it worked very well and was patented by San Marco. So you can see the result. These are pictures taken from the end of the combustion chamber in direction into the jet, to the flame itself. You can see the original nozzle C. And, and for sure it's a, a known steady and simul and operation, uh, you have several vortex and so, so you don't have a, a constant flame in a place, but you can see that it touched the wall with some pictures. And our solution was a Reynolds average Navier Stoke, so it was an average. And so you can see here in nozzle B that uh, the flame is, is for, uh, for, uh, farther, in a farther distance from the wall in the previous configuration. So it was uh, designed by us, implemented by San Marco, and tested by San Marco. Th these are the results. So, and at the end, the, the maintenance frequency was decreased in a way that was very economical, attractive for San Marco. Okay? And this, this study was possible to, to by only because we, we conjugate or we aggregate the traditional engineering methods with CFD tools and tech plot. So it's a very good example of use of CFD and tech plot for an industrial real case. Okay, so just a, a quick conclusion before we jump into questions. So uh, as uh, Guillerme just pointed out, CFD can be used to optimize complex designs like the pelletizing kill burner. And ultimately, by evaluating the design space using uh, TechPlot Chorus, where you can understand the context and understand what the physical drivers are in that context. So we, we basically have shown that CFD++ and TechPlot Chorus can be used together to address some complex engineering problems. And with that, we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to answer questions. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Guillerme, I'd like to acknowledge uh, all the work that ATS4I put together in, in making this possible, as well as uh, San Marco for uh, letting us take a look at the, the data here today. 
And I believe uh, we have um, Macon, who is one of the uh, people involved in the study, uh, with us this morning. He had a couple of questions as well, so we'll get into that in a second. So with that, I'd like to open it up to questions. So to ask a question, what you need to do is go into the questions tab and just type that in. And uh, as we get questions, we will uh, address them. So uh, Macon actually had a couple of comments. Uh, he said we also needed a solution without too much uh, CapEx applied. And maybe uh, Guillermo can, can talk to that in a second. And also the flow regulation valves would be a problem to change at the time. So, um, OK. So the question, uh, Guillermo, is uh, when you did the simulation, did you measure the wall temperature before and after the nozzle change? Uh, yes, uh, San Marco did that, and we had a specific study about temperature, and it's uh, after the, the, the modification, it decreased. So actually, the, the temperature of the wall is, is cooler than in our original design. I see. Thank you. And uh, uh, San Marco yeah. published part of these results in, in in the first paper and the second paper that is listed in the, the beginning of the presentation. Okay. Another question uh, about uh, whether or not you're planning to do an unsteady simulation for the to choose a design. Yeah, for for this this specific problem, we didn't need to to run the unsteady simulation because the the, the steady one already provides us. Uh, good solutions or good trend because it's all about trend. Uh, we are comparing uh, configurations and if you have an improvement uh, when comparing configuration B10 with C0 or E15 with C0, uh, that's enough to design and to choose uh, the best solution. Okay. But it can be done, yes. Okay. Uh, there was a, a question about tech plot and whether or not it could be used to uh, measure the distance from the edge of a contour line uh, in the general case. Um, right now, you have to do that somewhat manually. Um, I've been talking to the team, and we're, we're going to be looking at ways to make it more automated. Um, that might even be something that finds its way into the upcoming release of TechBot 360. Today, it's, it's a little complicated in that you have to actually uh, do this moderately manually. Um, so, Tim, that's a good question. Uh, we do have time for a few more questions. So, again, if you have a question, all you need to do is uh, go into the question tab and uh, go ahead and type that out. So, Okay, there, there's another question here about uh, TechPlot Chorus, um, and specifically there was a question uh, about um, how the results, how do you get results into TechBlock Chorus. Um, the easiest way to bring results into TechBlock Chorus is through an index file, but uh, certainly we can do a file crawl as well. Um, perhaps offline I can uh, send you some, some videos that will kind of show you how you do that. So, Okay, this is uh, not specifically about TechPlot, but how, do you, uh, how does tech support work for TechPlot? Uh, are there training courses? In, okay, so there's a, a couple of things. Um, yes, we have training courses. The great news about TechPod, it is is literally one of the easiest applications uh, to use on the market. So uh, it doesn't take a lot of time to get up and running. Um, but we do have tutorials online. Um, if you're interested, or anyone who uh, watched here today is interested, we do have a new version which is going to be released early in 2014. Uh, which we've made some modifications to make it a little easier. If you're interested, we could try to get you a pre-release, which will uh, be, it's now in beta, but we'll have a pre-release probably early in January. Uh, so, Harin, if you're interested, we can certainly uh, get you a copy of it. Uh, that being said, yes, we, we do have uh, training courses as well as kind of online training as well. So, good question. Uh, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Okay, uh, there was a, a 
so someone had asked a question earlier about the unsteady uh, result. Um, I guess the, the other question that's coming in here is about uh, what turbulence model you chose and, and did you model the particles? And I'll turn that back over to you, Guillerme. Did, when you did this work, um, did you consider additional turbulence models and uh, did you consider modeling the actual iron particles? Uh, at this uh, this type of problem that's uh, more uh, an engineering problem than a research or model development, um, we prefer not to, to make a, a, um, a search for the best turbulence model, or but we did for mesh, and because we ran like 30 k's, and so if you if you test three turbulence models, you are going to run 90 k's. So uh, in this case, uh, in this specific design, as we are comparing one result to another, not test uh, comparing it with um, uh, measurements or experimental data, it was not very important to, to understand the, the turbulence models. But uh, we used a standard model in CFD++, which, which is the K epsilon realizable. And the K epsilon realizable in CFD++ is a little bit different than others realizable because the, the, the realiz realizability of that means make it real. That's, that's, the, that's the point. And it's is proprietary of each software. In the case of CFD++, it's, it's a very good turbulence model in general. And as we didn't have too much like surreal or other effects in the, in the problem, uh, it was a basic turbulence model. But for sure, can be tested others. But it was not the objective of the work. I see. OK. Well. Um at this point, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for sitting in today, and thank you, Guillermo, again for a fascinating talk on thank your you. work. Uh, thank you, everybody. With, yeah. With San Marco, um, a quick. If you do have additional questions, there are some questions that have come in uh, that may not be something I can answer right away. Uh, so, if you'd like, you can email either uh, Guillermo or myself using the email that you see on screen. And uh, there's two things. If you are interested in participating in the early beta program of the next version of TechBot 360, uh, I know some of the people who are attending here today actually have access to it. But uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, certainly we would invite you to participate. Uh, also, for those of you who will be attending the uh, ASM equivalent, now called SciTech in January, uh, stop by the booth. We'll have the, the newest version of TechBot available for testing, as well as our patented t-shirts uh, for TechBot. So again, thank you very much, and thank you, Guillermo, and this concludes today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much.